the session. There you go. So you can also see it later on. And for those that are just joining now, I know that we are going to have some other people probably uh, join very soon. Uh, so I will ask you to please to uh, put your microphone in mute while I'm you know, presenting, but you're welcome to open your microphone if you have any kind of questions or you have any comments and you want to be just uh you know uh, asking something specific about this webinar so this is our uh you know bi-monthly uh, um, info session so what we have always is you know some questions around uh you know our programs uh our community who we are hiring you know like a Generally speaking, we always have a lot of questions uh, that are getting into our email. So it's easy for us to actually get into an info session and kind of like uh, sharing with you guys updates and, you know, in, in general, very good um, information about our community. Uh, so I'm going to start by saying that, uh, you know, the most common questions uh, we have is our about our startups uh, and our um, programs. And the most popular program that we have is actually the one that is uh, in regards of a visa program. So I love to use uh, our website uh, because it's easier for me to show you and you can navigate this later on and then you, you will find some of the information there that I'm sharing here with you. Uh, so our programs are actually in this uh, space here. Uh, many people in particular asking for the Stata Visa program. Uh, if there is anyone here with questions about Stata Visa program, this is your time to start posting questions if you have any. Uh, but you notice that uh, you know that we have uh, several programs uh, in our community. The Stata program is the most popular one. Uh, this is the one that comes with three phases and uh, finish up in a Stata Visa program. So some of the most common questions that we get in LATAM startups about this program is how do I enter to the startup visa program? How do I qualify? How I know if I have uh, something for, for this particular program? Well, all the information is there, but you know, one thing that I want to say is that we don't have a direct application to the startup visa program. People entering into this uh, program enters for, from phase one, phase two, and then the board of directors of LATAM startups will be approving uh, companies for the phase three, which is Stata Visa program. Uh, so normally these programs have a cost related, you can see here um, in how we anticipate the entrance or the acceptance of any startup in this program is by going with the criteria. That is this one here. You know, if, if somebody is uh, aiming for the Stata Visa program, you have to have a technology company with intellectual property. That means, you know, copyrights, patents, uh, trademarks are not really, uh, you know, considered uh, for now in our program as part as a strong intellectual property. If you have, if you don't have like an intellectual property per se, you know, because many people are like, okay, but I, uh, I do my own stuff, but I haven't, you know, fill out for copyrights or for patents. That is still okay, you know. The most important part is that you own your own technology and that you can claim that ownership. And that's what we call it a, a IP strategy uh, going forward. Uh, so we also need to have uh, financial uh, stable companies, uh, you know, those that already have some kind of traction in the market, those that already, uh, you know, have sales or at least some users uh, in their home countries. Uh, that proves that, you know, the company actually have some fu future, you know, in a market. Now, if you are in ideation, this is not a program for you. Uh, we don't take companies in ideation. And if we take an MVP, it must be an MVP that is uh, really ready to start, uh, you know, uh, the uh, commercialization. Uh, of course, we are looking for coachable teams, people that are open minds and that they can actually take the advice of the different advisors and mentors that we have in our community, which by the way, if you go to the About Us, um, you can find there our advisors and mentors uh, in our community. You will see their own uh, you know, profiles in there. And of course, uh, you know, if, for those that are aiming for a set of visa program, then they have to be willing to relocate in Canada. That doesn't mean that all of the startups have to be, or all of the co-founders, sorry, have to be relocated in Canada, but at least a portion of them for sure, because the Startup Visa program is all about, you know, having a permanent residence as well. 
you know, uh, your um, a company uh, in Canada. So um, all founders must be have a level of English proficiency. That's totally a requirement. Unfortunately, you know, if you are coming to this country, you have to have certain English uh, level in order to be communicating with our mentors and to uh, for us to be helping you. Now, be mindful that, uh, you know, we are a community of newcomers. Uh, if you go again to our About Us, you will see that uh, our board of directors and, you know, and team members and even, you know, our mentors, they sometimes have very international backgrounds. Our own team is basically, you know, most of them, if not for one or two people that are in their newcomers. Uh, so we understand your background, we understand what you're trying to do, but at the same time, you know, as a designated company for the Startup Visa program, we have to comply with some of the requirements uh, of the requirements that the government is asking us, you know, in this particular program. Uh, so being said that, you know, we are very strict with the type of companies we are receiving in the program. Uh, if you have uh, like questions about the type of companies we have in the program, you can always go to clients and you can see the type of companies we have in there. In portfolio, we have currently two unicorns that are companies that are valued over $1 billion. And, uh, you know, we receive startups that have been with a commercial, uh, you know, commercial MVP, uh, you know, depending when they are in biotechnology in particular, or they are in clean tech and green tech sometimes, you know, commercialization take a little bit uh, longer than expected. Uh, so for that reason, you know, sometimes that are in early stage, companies in early stage, but we also have companies that are, uh, you know, with sales already in their countries, sometimes in between $200,000 annually up to 10, $13 million annually. Uh, for many cases, uh, people won't call this a startup in certain countries, but for you know the standardization in the industry in Canada and the states, you know the concept in general is a company that is in technology with intellectual property and that is growing in sales. A startup can be up to Series D, uh, you know, when they are getting into the one billion dollar. So uh, you know doesn't doesn't necessarily have to be in ideation. So that's the the most important part for us. So uh, many people also ask us, you know, okay, let's say we pass uh, through phase one, phase two, and then we reach out to phase three, and then the board of directors of LATAM startups approve you. When do you get your uh, a letter of support? Letter of support is happening, uh, you know, immediately after the board of directors gives the approval. We have about one week you know, to prepare the better letter of support and start the phase three program. It's the first uh, step that we do with the startups. And uh, we are expecting that, uh, you know, the companies will pass the first three months working in their technology, working in their business plan and how they are going to enter and tackle a Canadian market or the state's, uh, you know, market or any other market that makes sense for them. Again, like what we are looking is for a scalable type of business. Um, so, you know, the three first months are very critical for us to evaluate the case uh, of the company and make sure that the company has, uh, you know, the right profile for that program. Uh, now, uh, you know, again, if you have any questions about the Star Visa program, you can post it right now in our chat, or, you know, you can go also to our frequent ask questions uh, part and you will see all the normal questions that we normally we get, you know, uh, sometimes in our inbox, and then you can facilitate some of the answers there. Um, it's also important for you guys to know that, uh, you know, the service and program is not the only program for entrepreneurs, and certainly it's not the only option for those that are outside of Canada and want to come here to Canada. Uh, there are so many other options, and that's why, you know, sometimes phase one is very important for us because our immigration lawyers and people that you know are run, surrounded by a, in our community can guide you through what will be your best case. So, so if you are aiming for that program, just don't get fixed with the idea of that you have to be a part of that program. Um, we don't receive necessarily recommendations, you know, for the program, or we don't skip phase one per se. 
uh, you know, just uh, take in consideration that this program is pretty much a standard program that we need to pass through, you know, the three phases that I mentioned uh, in there. Um, now I'm going to enter into another program, which is the corporate program. And this corporate program normally is aimed to be for companies that are, uh, you know, based outside of Canada, but they want to have a foot in Canada, not necessarily link with immigration. So they sometimes want to have an office in North America, they want to prove technology, they want to maybe start having sales in North America, and they want some help. The corporate program is for that. So basically imitates pretty much, you know, what is this startup program. But uh, in this particular case, you know, uh, co-founders are not looking to immigrate to Canada. So if somebody is interested in this program, just, uh, you know, you can ask me questions about this program. Uh, the startup program uh, has a deadline to apply for the next cohort in July. Uh, you know, we are closing applications in June 25th. So just in a few days, um, we are closing applications for this program that aims to get to the startup visa program. And for the corporate program, we don't have deadlines. People can enter to that program anytime. We just need to have technology company. And, you know, uh, let's say we, we don't work with traditional type of companies. So it has to be a technology company as well in order to enter to this type of program. So now passing to the third program. Uh, if anyone has questions, please go ahead, put it in the chat. If not, I, I will continue here. Uh, but the, the next program is the Newcomer uh, Entrepreneur Accelerator Program. And this is a program that we are very excited to have a second cohort. Uh, we started with this program last year, it was supported by IRAP, uh, which, which is a federal organization that is supporting uh, incubators, accelerators, and startups with funding. And this case, this program is funded by IRAP uh, for this reason. Uh, you know, the type of company that we're looking is also technology companies, intellectual property, but the type of co-founders that, you know, have to be a part of this particular program, they have to have already permanent residence or be new citizens in Canada. So you see somebody has put in the chat some question. The Stravisa program is about uh, a, to my home country business expansion in Canada or newly business set it up in Canada. Well, it depends, um, uh, sure. Uh, for the people insure solutions. Uh, we sometimes have, uh, you know, companies that are going to open up uh, newly in Canada. They don't have a per se, you know, business traction in their home countries, but uh, for in our community, that tends to be very specific type of companies like the ones that are, for example, medical devices or green tech and clean tech. You know, again, like the ones that have a very, difficult commercialization cycle to the type of technology that they are working with. Um, if they are in ideation, then certainly this is not a program for them. But if they already have an MVP, they have an advanced MVP, and they just need to keep the research, you know, to start to commercialize in those sectors, then it's okay for us that they don't have a business in their home country. If it's any other type of sector, let's say fintech, educational sector, a tech, uh, you know, any other sector that has basically a software solution. And, you know, sometimes uh, certain type of devices that uh, is, is connected more with uh, IoT, um, then we require to have some traction locally to demonstrate that, you know, what you are saying that you have actually works in other market and somebody has the appetite to pay for that. Uh, you know, uh, medical devices is a little bit difficult. It's, it's more complex and green tech and clean tech also tend to be a little bit more difficult, but for the other solutions shouldn't be that difficult to prove that somebody is willing to pay for that and that you have some market uh, to grow. So I hope that that answers the question, uh, but if not, you can open your mic or post it in the chat again, happy to answer any questions in regards to that. Uh, so, yeah, as so I was saying, uh, you know, basically uh, the Newcomer Accelerator Program also has open applications. Hopefully this is for permanent residents and uh, residents or new citizens in Canada. And if you have a company in technology that already have some sales, but you need to really, really start growing, then you should apply for that one. And the application will be closing in August uh, 25th, I believe. Um, 
Uh, okay, so I have another question in regards of how many companies are taken in cohorts uh, for the Star Visa program and how many companies have enrolled in the Star Visa program so far. Yeah, so we take depending of the number of companies that are actually advancing per phase. So we don't have a number, a fixed number. It could be like, you know, in one cohort, we can have five companies. In another cohort, we can have eight companies. All depends on, you know, how many uh, the board of directors uh, of LATAM startups will approve. We don't have a limitations of approving or declining company. What the board of directors is doing basically is putting in the shoes of an immigration officer and look at the case and see if the case actually makes sense for the Canadian market. So being said that, you know, when somebody enters to phase one, uh, you know, let's say with a company and then, uh, you know, we figure out during phase one that there are big risks, big challenges, uh, you know, for them to continue into the program, it will be a waste of time and money for that company to continue investing, uh, you know, in an expansion process. If you know from the beginning that it's going to be a risk for your company, financially speaking, or business model speaking, you know, for whatever is happening. So in many cases, we have around, you know, 60% of the start of phase one entering to phase two. No, because we decide that they shouldn't enter to that path, but because themselves, they have decided that, you know, this is not the right time to uh, continue for X reason. Now, uh, from phase two to phase three, we have an approval rate of over 85%, I will say. Sometimes we have one or two companies rejected by the board of directors because they feel like they are not ready and they need to work a little bit more. Uh, but most of the cases are approved. Uh, for a star visa program, you can see in, um, sorry, I'm entering two events, but it's actually in clients. Uh, you can see in clients uh, how many companies we have in a star visa program. So, so far we have 39 companies um, in a star visa program. From them, uh, four of them have been approved for permanent residence already. Uh, so we're very happy. We don't have any one so far that have, has been rejected uh, for, uh, sorry about that. I was clicking in the wrong link here, but we don't have any company that has been rejected so far, uh, you know, with instead uh, of visa per se, our cases are very strong and we continue hopefully uh, getting approvals. Uh, but also, uh, you know, I have to say the Time, uh, time frame to approve a case doesn't depend on us, depends on the government and you know how many cases they have. You can imagine they get a lot of cases, so we cannot tell you know the others that are waiting in the list. We have been approved since 2019 and the other waiting in the list are basically due to the pandemic delays, uh, you know, because before the, the uh, application was kind of uh, in paper and it has passed now to an online application. Um, so the business I'm going to do is in Canada is an idea stage. Do I qualify for this stage? You don't qualify for this stage. You, you need to have something more solid. Um, so we don't work in ideation. Uh, Jose is asking us, does digital agricultural drone spraying, mapping, censoring, qualifying tech company to be considered for a star visa? Yes, uh, Jose, that's actually a type of company that we have. And actually, you know, just recently we approved um, this one here, Cropino. Actually, you can see this company perhaps, you know, between, uh, a, you know, the companies that we have. This one is in agricultural technology. Uh, the team came from Iran and just recently we're approving to start a visa program. Uh, the only thing is that we have worked in the past for uh, with companies that have drawn applications and things like that. Uh, sometimes the license is what, it, uh, what is difficult for, um, a, you know, for people to realize, you know, that they need licenses, they need to figure out some steps. But certainly the agricultural technology is booming. Uh, you know, there is a lot of help from the Canadian government also for agricultural technology companies. So I will encourage you to look at the application. Uh, I have another question in regards that, uh, is there a way to connect with the startup companies and looking for opportunities with them? Uh, I'm not sure what type of opportunities that may, uh, that will be something in volunteer basis or, uh, you know, for job opportunities. If it's so, we always are looking for volunteers working with the companies and some of the companies are actually hiring. You will see in the next days, 
uh, that we are going to publish in, in, is in this part in careers, okay? We are going to publish a couple of opportunities um, for uh, companies or for people to be hired in uh, the technology companies that we have. And also in our community, we have a couple of hiring coming, coming up soon. So if any of you are looking for, uh, you know, working in our community or working with any of the technology companies that are in our community, then certainly I will encourage you to, to go to that part and then uh, look for applications. Um, now, there is also our annual conference coming up uh, after this session here. Uh, I will send, uh, you know, a note so any of you want to join our annual cons conference in person, you know, we also uh, have opportunities to be a uh, meeting with our startups. Um, so if, Dan Mai, if you are like a base in Toronto in particular, you can probably, uh, you know, uh, have a conversation with them. For those that are joining our, uh, our event today, we have free tickets for the Latin Startups Conference. And so you can meet our startups, you can meet all our unicorns as well. Uh, you know, coming to the conference. Uh, so I have other question here in regards of business should be technology based or technology driving business. It should be a business where you own the technology. That's what I that I can say. You know, you can be an innovative business that has some components of technology, but you own that type of technology, or you are totally technology and you own completely the technology. So that's why you know there is a differentiation between copyrights patents that you may have you know for your business um uh, you don't again you don't have to be uh with the patent uh, on hand or with the copyright on hand but you have to be able to claim ownership when when time comes sorry uh to be ready to claim to your ownership um so i have jose antonio also asking could you further elaborate on the financial stable company subject? Uh, what precisely is this concept about revenues balance? Yeah, so that's a very important question. Thank you, Jose Antonio, for asking that. Uh, we are looking for uh, you know companies uh, that are already with a certain level of revenue, especially if you are coming from an emerging market, which is uh, you know most of the companies that we have. They are coming from emerging markets. The cost of living and having operations in Canada is pretty high. And the first year of operations, you need to have enough funding, not just for living, which this is very confusing because sometimes people go and click in the set of visa requirements and they say they see something around $30,000. And that's probably the cost of living, certainly not in Toronto, I have to say, uh, but in somewhere in Canada, you have to look at the cost of operations of your company. So it's very important for us that the company that is coming here is financially stable to take that first year market. So depending on the company, because many times I get the question, so how much money do you need? Um, it depends on the company, depends on the operation, depends on the number of co-founders. And this is something that we work with the companies in the first uh, phase when they get accepted into that phase. Uh, so I will say, you know, um, just explore that option. I know if you convert to your local currency, it will look like a lot, uh, you know, depending on uh, what is your operation. But, you know, you have to consider that you are paying Canadian dollars, living in a Canadian dollar environment, you know, and operating also a company in a Canadian dollar environment. So your conversion rate, uh, you know, may not like uh, that much in your side, how it will look like, but you have to have enough funding for a year. That's what we mean to say with that. I hope that uh, I answered the question. Um, so, so far, I have another four minutes here before I'm leaving. Uh, you know, we have another webinar coming up. Uh, so it's very important uh, for you guys to know that we have very, uh, you know, recurrent events like this info session that we are having today. Uh, we have every other month, but we also have, uh, you know, something that I think that uh, many people are going to like. It's the Canada 101. You know, this is a very short, uh, a, you know, training session for you to look at, you know, and estimate how much it's going to cost you, uh, you know, to bring a company here and if, if it's going to be beneficial or not. Uh, so this, um, for the Canada 101, what we are looking is, uh, you know, how to incorporate a company in Canada, how to immigrate to Canada and how to get funding in Canada. 
So those three topics are addressed by uh, lawyers and incorporation, lawyers in immigration and funding opportunity from one of our partners that will explain what kind of grants because technology companies have lots of grants in the market. So you guys have a lot of opportunities uh, you know, to claim grants when you have a technology company. In Canada in particular, over 100 grants are available for technology companies. So it's important many people sometimes are looking for investors when you can have probably free money for your Canadian entity, uh, you know, while you are growing. So if you're looking for that, you know, next um, next week we are having an info, se uh, sorry, uh, the Canada 101 seminar. And then hopefully, you know, you can get those answers in a very short time and then decide whether or not, you know, this is a good move for your company and also explore some other options for immigration. Um, I have another question here. Uh, from your professional experience, what are some of the main barriers, challenges do international companies face when they are trying to bring their business here? That's a super awesome question. Thank you for, so much for that one. And I have to say that I don't have two hours to talk about that, uh, but I will try to summarize this in two minutes. Um, basically, uh, you know, when you are coming with a company here, the most challenging part that I've seen for, uh, you know, the co-founders have been the switching mind into North American market. This is a market that is very specific, very niche. When you are coming to Canada, US or Europe, uh, you know, you want to come with something that is specific in an area. Uh, being said that, you know, let's say you have a company that produces dairy, you know, and uh, this is what happens with us always with the type of companies that are coming here. I, I get that there are companies saying, uh, we have customized technology that doesn't fly, uh, you know, that much because it's very generalistic. And in emerging countries, you can be very generalistic, but in mature markets, you have to be very, very niche. So you either, you know, you don't sell diary, you sell, uh, you know, milk or butter or cheese, but it, you don't sell diary. So, it, you know, finding that niche, I think is the most challenging part. And then culturally speaking, you know, understanding how to get to that client in a way that, you know, uh, you are not, uh, you know, harassing somebody with, your sales strategies, with, which in other countries can be taken well, and these countries can be taken a little bit harsh, you know, if you are trying to reach out clients in, in your way, in your country. Um, if there is a way direct to connect with me, I have submitted a contract form. Uh, not sure which one you submitted, and me, uh, if it was, uh, you know, we have so many job forms. And uh, depending on what you're looking for, uh, you know, it, you can talk with different people in our organization, but certainly I'm going to follow up, uh, you know, by, uh, by email uh, in Eventbrite. So you are going to get your ticket for the LATAM conference. Every single one of you guys uh, are going to get a ticket for the LATAM conference. If you want to come in person, just please do. And if you have any specific questions in regards of, uh, you know, volunteering positions, we do have those. But also be mindful that, you know, not always we can place volunteer positions. It depends, you know, this is a match with the companies and we need to make sure that the companies are comfortable with the profile that is in there. So uh, besides that, we may have a lot of opportunities for volunteer positions. Just sometimes we cannot take all of them uh, just because of the companies, you know, that we have uh, cannot take all of them. And, and same certainly uh, happens also internally with us. So I hope that that responds our question is your questions. I have to have a hard stop here because right now uh, we are going to go into another session uh, with our friends in Berlin. Uh, so uh, if you are signing up for that session, I will see you there. But if not, please uh, keep in contact uh, through email. I'm very happy to uh, continue working with you guys and answering any questions that you may have. Thank you so much.